What's up, Hooper? Books are something that have taken my game to the next level, both on and off the court. So here are four that you should read. So the first book I want to talk about today is Atomic Habits by James Clear, which has taught me the importance of the 1% improvement and consistency that leads to results. So back in 2003, a British cycling team was able to change everything that the bikers did by 1% and started to win a bunch of championships. So by 1%, they changed the pillow that the bikers were gonna sleep on, the type of seat that they sat on to make it more comfortable, the type of food they would eat pre-game. So Josh, how does this 1% rule apply to basketball? What I've learned now is that those 1% little details help long-term turn into greatness. And those 1% little changes all add up, maybe not to 100%, but to something that's meaningful and valuable. Well, this could be maybe you're studying Kyrie Irving or favorite ball, or Stephen Curry, favorite basketball player's film. You're dribbling an extra day a week. Now maybe you're playing on Saturdays and Sundays with your friends. Maybe in your workout you try to shoot more free throws in a row for higher accuracy. By doing this over 365 days and, and then a decade, which great players do, this leads to long-term improvement. The next two books are by Tim Grover, the trainer of Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant, who once said, there's no off season if you want to be a great player. So the winning 13 details the best ways to help your chances of winning, but also that winning isn't necessarily an object. It's something you have to chase and work and earn every single day. And then there's the relentless 13, which is the best way to improve your craft and continue to strive to stay amongst the top of that ladder once you get there. So something I just want to highlight here about the Relentless 13 is the difference between a cooler, a closer, and a cleaner. The most basic level of greatness is a cooler, somebody who looks and sees what everybody else does and just has the basic requirements. So if you ask them to get a job done, they're going to get it done but they're not gonna do anything extra that's fancy or special that is not required of them. Then there's the closer who likes to see, make sure there's no variables involved in his success and also likes to see what everybody else around him thinks about his results. Finally, there's the cleaner. Examples would be Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant, two basketball players that could handle any challenge put in front of them, get into the zone, and also they don't care about what everybody else thinks about them. They go out, they get the results, they get out of there, and they continue to have a great career. Lastly, there's Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins, which is one I saw a lot of positive reviews about. It was kind of like, now this one doesn't even have basketball in the title. How could it really be about basketball? David Goggins isn't a basketball trainer, but it's one that I think has actually helped my game the most. Now this happened to me this past off season, going through conditioning. If you've ever done conditioning, there are points where you start to get very, very tired and out of breath. Your chest is burning, you're really sore, and what I've learned in those moments, and especially through David Goggins' book, is that that's when your second brain has to kick in and just tell you, you know what, I can conquer anything. He's been through so much that he's able to just do the challenging and really hard things. And it's also opened up my perspective on what I call difficult in life. My final book today is The Mama Mentality by Kobe Bryant. And it's really motivated me to in, use the Mamba mentality in all of my workouts, but just the amount of details that Kobe Bryant has put into to perfecting his craft. Whether it's getting up at 3 or 4 a.m. to work out, this book has just taught me the level of detail it takes to become an NBA player and the amount of work that Kobe Bryant had put in to get to where he was. All right, Hooper, big message or takeaway from today is you must start reading basketball books to gain an edge over the competition. I'm not kidding when I say it will change your life on and off the court. So let me know in the comments if you're going to start reading these books or you have another one. I'm always open to suggestions. Subscribe for more basketball stuff like this. And check out this video over here where I detail the 13 other basketball improvement tips I wish I knew earlier.